I've been looking forward to this. Back in May, I said I was taking a break from Star Wars until something got rave reviews or really grabbed me. I was saddened at the string of mediocrity we had gotten, a bevy of just fine Star Wars, but nothing truly special. And since then, loads of you have told me to go ahead and watch Andor. Apparently, it's really good against all the odds. Here's the thing. What I'm seeing does look good, but I just don't think I'm ready for that. It's a full series commitment to a universe that still has a sour, sour taste in my mouth. Maybe if we had some real time between Disney Plus shows, I'd be more excited to give it a go. But after the one-two punch of Boba Fett's shit book and whatever that Kenobi series boiled down to, it all feels too soon. There's hours of Andor to get through, and if I end up not liking it, I'm going to feel really stupid for once again trusting that this time Disney is going to get Star Wars right. I understand that a lot of you have left comments asking me to do a video on the show, and hey, maybe I will if enough of you really want me to do it. I'm not made of stone. But having said all that, I'm an absolute whore for the Duke Meister General. Dracula 2.0 is one of my favourite Sith Lords. He's just as cool as Maul, just as potent as the Emperor, and he's easily one of the most stylish Star Wars characters next to Lando. Man, they have some sweet capes. I have a soft spot for Attack of the Clones, and so seeing two of my favourites getting such mid-treatment on Disney Plus this year was enough for me to tap out. But equally, doing something on Dooku is enough to put me back in. Towers of the Jedi are a bunch of short, easy to digest animated episodes. I find the idea of seeing Jedi era Dooku appealing, and hey, I figured if it's just as average and disappointing as the rest of Star Wars in 2022, then it won't sting too much. Each episode is under 15 minutes. Ha! Who cares? If it's dog shit, I can creep back into my hole of Star Wars abstinence. It's only dipping a toe in, right? Right? As a guy who didn't follow any of the marketing for this series, I thought it was a proper anthology with a different Jedi leading the story in every episode. So I was only expecting at most one Count Dooku episode, not three. The structure of this trilogy is really nice. It begins with Qui-Gon under Dooku's wing and ends on the day Dooku learns of Qui-Gon's death at the hands of Darth Maul. The three episodes chart Dooku's fall to the dark side and his transition from Jedi to Sith Lord. It's cool that we now have what is essentially Dooku's Revenge of the Sith in animated form. The first two episodes see Dooku forced to wrestle with the corruption of the Republic and he sees firsthand how the poor constituents are treated by their powerful, rich, out-of-touch senators. Much like Anakin, his will to help those who are helpless is admirable, but in order to serve justice to those people, he all too easily falls into the same tactics of aggression employed by their oppressors. <laughs> Dooku fails to bring about a fair outcome for the people, and this resentment expands into the following episode, Choices. A Dooku and Mace buddy cop adventure? Are you kidding me? I would have liked to see them get stuck into a little bit more of an adventure, but that's not really what this little trilogy is about. In lieu of spectacle involving these two immensely powerful Jedi, we get an essential beat in Dooku's fall. Your devotion to rules is sometimes inspiring and sometimes maddening. Mace represents a rigid adherence to the Jedi Council and by extension the Republic, in spite of their all too obvious failings. Dooku comes to wonder, in much the same way Anakin later would, if the Jedi truly nurture the good of the galaxy or essentially serve as soldiers for the will of the Senate. By the time we come to the final episode of Dooku's arc, The Sith Lord, his opinion has already shifted to one that is stringently anti-Republic and anti-Jedi. However, his heart has yet to catch up. I love the relationship he has to Qui-Gon in these shorts. Dooku's independence, his willingness to question the order of things, is what leads him to become a Sith Lord, but it is also what leads Qui-Gon to become a more unorthodox Jedi. Qui-Gon is surely his master's apprentice, and without Dooku in the timeline, Qui-Gon would have never have had the vision to insist Anakin be trained. It's here in these episodes that Dooku's perspective comes to mean so much for the larger story of why the Jedi failed Anakin Skywalker and brought about their their own downfall. My favourite moment is when Dooku laments how, as a boy, Qui-Gon was enamoured with the Great Tree. He knew nothing like it. Dooku would bring his apprentice to this tree amongst a world of steel to show him that there is more to the universe than what is shown in front of them, to think independently and to discover everything the galaxy has to offer in the way of goodness. The death of Qui-Gon is the release that allows Dooku to cross blades with another Jedi and finalise his allegiances. The presentation is gorgeous. 
the Clone Wars style of animation has just gotten better and better over the years, and the use of light and colour to create very distinct moods on each planet is masterful. Similarly, the score across all three episodes really helps to bring a contemplative, sombre feeling to Dooku's story, and serves to add real weight to his choices. Composed by Kevin Kinner, this soundtrack features standouts such as Qui-Gon and the Sith Lord and Dooku's Fall. Yaddle is key to the third part of Dooku's story, and the most startling revelation here is that her unnamed race don't all talk like Yoda, so I guess he's just the weird one for talking that way. Or maybe Yaddle is the only one who talks normally, and by comparison she's the weird one. Much to ponder there is. Hmm. I love that it ends at the same abandoned district of Coruscant that we see at the end of Attack of the Clones. Now we know the location of this scene is where a pivotal moment of Dooku's life occurs. Plus the visual palette is just fantastic, all those burnt oranges and browns. There's something really eerie about seeing an abandoned area of Coruscant and it's the perfect place for Palpatine to have his lair. Yaddle and Dooku duel in a nice parallel to Attack of the Clones. I guess the Count really has something against the vertically challenged. The duel ends with an absolutely gnarly death for Yaddle as she is cry- Ouch. And then, oh shit! She survived! This was actually even better in spite of how satisfyingly gruesome the fake out death was, because now there is no winning in the heat of battle. Dooku has to make the measured decision to finish her off, and with it his fall to the dark side is complete. A rite of passage for Palpatine's Jedi betrayers are to kill one of their own. I like the contrast here with Anakin's fall, he attacks Windu in a snap decision, he does the wrong thing but he is remorseful and distraught, clearly wrestling with his morality and his love for Padme. Dooku here is calm and considerate, his turn feeling much more seedy. I suppose this stands as a signifier of why Anakin was able to come back to the light and Dooku was not. These shorts are better than several whole episodes of live-action Disney Plus Wars. Brevity can be key. I could see a live-action version of this being 40 minutes per episode, coming to the same conclusions and having the same amount of thematic depth. A lot of the live-action stuff feels plodding and stuffed with filler. It leads me to wonder if Filoni works better with smaller runtimes and is yet to truly make full use of the longer live-action iterations. So Disney may have screwed up the return of two Attack of the Clones goats this year, but at least they got it right with a third. Count Dooku, once performed by the late great Christopher Lee, continues to find new life in Corey Burton's wonderful performance, and it was a real treat to get a neat and well-realised story with the character. So yeah, all in all this was a fun watch, and a nice way to just, just slightly dip my toes back into Star Wars. I feel the temptation to watch Andor more and more, even if it still annoys me that two of the biggest characters in Star Wars this year got shows in comparison that were shot and crafted with far less care than the series about a supporting character as shown up exactly once in a one-off spin-off film. But I guess that's the way the cookie has crumbled. Even the Andor trailer is more visually satisfying than all of Fett and Kenobi by possibly Bryce Dallas Howard's episode. How did it come to this? Kenobi in particular should have been a really polished experience. We were waiting for that for years. I digress. Tales of the Jedi, for what it is, is a fun little series. It may well feel like a bit of Clone Wars DLC, especially during the Ahsoka episodes, but getting the chance to see the tragic fall of Count Dooku, one of the most interesting prequel characters, is well worth the brief but bright time. A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. If you'd like to find me on Instagram, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can find me at, you guessed it, at fullfatvideos.